everyone, today I'm looking at my biggest printer ever, the CR10 Max. It's got a huge print bed, 460 by 460 by 520 millimeters. That's 110 liters or print volume or 29 gallons. That's huge. Now I've already tested it out. And if you're curious, it's just the same as the CR10S Pro I revealed, just larger, but it works basically the same quite well so i'm not going to spend more time on that you can go check that video out for more info i've also made a base for it since it's too big to really fit on any of my shelves the first thing you need to know is i hate big 3d printers i think they're stupid at least outside of very specialized uses a 3d print is a bit like wood in that it has layers or grain and like wood it will split along that grain so large 3d prints are often weak and can break easily. Usually it's better to make large objects out of many smaller prints fitted together. Same as if you wanted to make something strong, but uh, something strong out of wood. Anything large and made in one piece is going to be much weaker. So large printers are mostly useful for decorative prints, vases and useless stuff like that. I mostly make functional 3D prints, jigs, enclosures and thick fixtures, stuff like these two holders. The other problem with large 3D printers is they print at the same speed as small 3D printers, often slower because some have to move a big bed back and forth, which means actually using their full capacity is not very practical. Printing this test model of a boat would take 10 days with the printer running day and night. That's just silly. What I think would be useful is if this printer could make very large but still strong and functional prints and make them fast. Normally, a printer nozzle squirts plastic out of a tiny nozzle just 0.4 millimeters in diameter. With that, we can get layer heights from about 0.1 to 0.3 millimeters. By using a feather nozzle, like a 1 mm nozzle, we can get layer heights of 0.8 mm. But there is a catch. The stock hot end can melt plastic fast enough to take advantage of 1 mm nozzle. So today, I'm going to swap out both the nozzle and the heater block so I can get much faster, stronger, but lower resolution prints out of the CR10 Max. Let's get to it. So I need to heat the hot end up first, and then I can take it apart. still uh, a little bit hot so I'm going to wait till we cool down to 50. So this is the heating element and this is the temperature sensor. I'm going to move it to the new block. So I tried to use the original heat sink, heat sink from uh, Creality, but it doesn't work. I have this one instead, so I'm going to use this one. If this one doesn't work now, because I'm in Shenzhen, so it's easy for me to order another one from Taobao. So I heated up the nozzle and they reached the temperature. I'm just going to uh, see if it can extrude the plastic first. Okay, the plastic is coming out, which is good. Now I'm going to work on the bed leveling sensor. The hot end distance to the bed 
is right now, but the sensor isn't. And I have the data before I have the sensor's distance. So now I'm going to adjust it and set it to the right distance. Looks good. Okay, now let's close it. Okay, so let's take a look at our result. This is a standard size Benchy Bolt uh, test print we use to calibrate printers. It's printed at 0.2 millimeters layer height with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and took an hour and 20 minutes to print. This is a really typical print size and resolution because it doesn't take long and it looks decent. Now let's blow this up 300%. This is the same resolution, 0.2 millimeters and the same nozzle size, but it took 18 hours. It looks really nice, but if you are doing any sort of production and this was just a quick jig or a fixture you needed for a setup, really inconvenient in terms of workflow. But if we take, if we look at the print I did with a one millimeter nozzle at 0.8 millimeter layer height, this look, this took just four hours. It's the same amount of plastic, 300 gram, almost, almost exact same tolerance, same strength. Here's a small work holding wise, 100% 3D printed. It's based on a traditional Chinese design we use for carving stamps. I'll put the STL in the description. It took seven hours to print with 700 gram and the same basic design could be used on a small CNC machine and custom to hold any in regular shape. Lastly, lastly, here's a close hanger. Now that may seem like a silly thing to print and for now it still is. I checked online, you can get the same hanger in America at Walmart for 20 cents. But this took just one hour and 60 cents worth of plastic to make, so it's not too far off. Imagine instead of a bunch of handers getting injection molded in China, put in packages and boxes, warehouse here, put on a boat, sent to America, put on a truck, and then sitting on a shelf in Walmart in case you need one. You just have a bucket of American recycled plastic pallets, and if you needed a hander or any of that plastic dollar store crap we send over by the boatload, you could print it for almost the same price. Please still buy the 3D printers from us though. Anyway, disrupting that supply chain is the angle of 3D printing, and it always seems too far away to even think about. But this little hammer, it makes me think maybe it's not as far away as I thought. But, and here's the big but. It's ugly. This 0.8 millimeter layer height is not easy on the eyes. This has been a big problem in 3D printing. People want smooth plastic, even if it adds nothing to the function of the part, makes it weaker and makes it print five times slower. 3D printing parts are still largely judged by how smooth they are. I heard that the same thing happened when molded plastic came along. It looked different than what people were used to, so they put a lot of effort into adding wood grains and leather patterns to make it look more normal. Now, people are used to smooth injection molded parts. So a good part means one that's smooth like it has been injection molded, which is not something 3D printers do all that well. And in my opinion, chasing smoothness over better physical properties is a mistake. Okay, the CR-10S Max uses the same hardware as the CR-10S Pro. It's solid and reliable. If you want a large format printer and you're comfortable with the downside to that size I've outlined, it's your best bet. It comes with a standard heat block and 0.4mm nozzle. 
I will recommend that Creality offer a kit to change that to a vertical heated bra and larger nozzle. Remember that just changing to a large, larger nozzle is not sufficient for faster print speed. I know this video had more talking than usual. Is everyone okay with that? Let me know in the comments. That's it for today. I'll see you all next time. And remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it.